Good day, mate. Welcome back to the channel. My name's FPL Roo, and welcome back to another FPL video. So in today's video, we're going to be going through my team selection for game week nine. Uh, first of all, we will be jumping into my game week eight score, looking how I did, and then going through my team selection, my transfers, my captains, etc., etc. Um, if you are new to the channel, please make sure you do subscribe and smash a like on this video too. Let's get into it. Yo, listen up, Rue is stepping up the game Where fantasy premier league runs in his veins From transfers to captains, he's always on top Guiding you through every game week non-stop They say Rue got that style of flow Welcome to the channel, enjoy the show Wild cards, free hits with so much vibe If you're hunting for success, then make sure you subscribe So like I said, first up, we will be uh, going through my game week 8 team So a real, real stinker to be honest, most game weeks I've been a stinker. I've got a red arrow apart from one week where um, I captain or I had Son in my team for his hat trick against Burnley, um, and he kind of propelled me up the ranks. Um, and yeah, that's the only green arrow I've had, and it was a big one. But yeah, um, so I did take a minus four this week. Uh, so two um, transfers. Um, Onana started for Onana, got me two points. Not the best. Defence was actually probably the best part of my team. One of my transfers in, Mark Gahey, got me a clean sheet and free bonus. Really happy with him. Um, Doggy got me a clean sheet too, which was six points. And then Matty Cash uh, conceded against Wolves, so ended up with two points. Um, Madison, again, my other transfer in, got me an assist and a clean sheet. So I can't really fault my transfers in. Um, I did take out Anthony Gordon, who wasn't playing. Um, and I took out a player who I will forget. So let me just check. Yes, I took out a stupid hand. So two players that weren't going to be playing. So obviously it's going to be positive, but they both got returned. So that's really, really great. And I'm really happy with that. And Buena and Rashford continued the disappointment. Um, and Saka didn't play, which was hurtful as I almost did um, Saka to Salah. And I'll probably captain Salah. So that really, really did hurt me. I did captain Son and blanked which was yeah horrible. Every time I have captain in the season, he has blanked. And then my two strikers blanked as well. So all round, a shocking game week. I've dropped down to 1 million rank. Um, I was 50k at one point this season, so that is hurtful. But um, we move from here. I still have my wild card in my back pocket. So hopefully that can uh, jump me up the ranks. And um, to rub salt into the wounds, turn, I've got a clean sheet. Um, let's get into this game week, which I hopefully game week nine will be a good game week for me. So um, before we go into my team, um, please make sure you do subscribe to the channel and smash the like on this video. So Anana and Goal have decided to play Anana, Sheffield United away. Yes, Turner has Luton at home, um, but it just hurts me having a having a goalkeeper that is that is well was expensive. <laughs> he was five million, um, not not anymore, but he was five million and sitting on my bench. So for that reason, a little bit of stubbornness, I have gone for Anana. Who knows that could change. Uh, Botman is in my starting lineup still, so we'll have to wait for news on him. He does have Palace at home, and um, like I said many, many times in previous videos, Palace without Eze is just not the same attacking wise. So I'm hopeful of a clean sheet from Botman. Um, we'll go through if he doesn't um, get minutes, what I would do. But for now, I'm happy with Kabore with Forrest away on my bench. So I'm even happy with Gay with Newcastle away because I do think Palace are one of the strongest teams defensively. Um, this season. The doggy Fulham at home. I am expecting an attack and return this time round. Yes, he got me a clean sheet last time, but I really do want that massive haul from him after keeping him for them tough games that Spurs had. Uh, Matty Cash with West Ham at home. Um, a player that delivered for me straight away when I brought him in. And I am hopeful this time round, although maybe not hopeful for a clean sheet as West Ham are a decent team. But um, an attack and return is what I'm hopeful for from Matty Cash. Um, like I said, if Botman is injured, I'll talk about what my transfer might be, but I'm happy with Kabore coming off the bench if he does play. If not, Mark Gay against Newcastle away. It's not ideal, but um, it's not the worst option out there. Let's get into the midfield. So we'll start off with uh, James Madison. So the two Spurs boys, Fulham at home. So a really good fixture, to be honest. Spurs have shown how great they can be defensively. The only issue I have is James Madison hasn't delivered at home this season. So it's only away from home. Um, and Son as well has only delivered against um, Liverpool at home. So other than that, most of the points have come away from home. But don't forget, Spurs have played a lot of a lot of away games this season. Um, they've had Man United at home as well, which is again not the easiest game. It, it was pretty easy, but it's not the easiest game on paper. 
Sheffield United at home, which has got two last minute goals in, and then Liverpool at home. So it's only three home games, to be fair. Um, they've had a lot of away games. So hopefully this game can change that and the Spurs boys can deliver. Um, and Buemo <laughs> with Burnley at home. I'm a bit fed up of Mbwemo and we'll talk about whether I should be taking him out this week. But Burnley at home, if he's ever going to do it, please do it in this game. Um, Brentford need a win, I'd say. Um, they did start off the season okay, but mm, the last four game weeks, maybe even six game weeks, has not been great. Um, they got a draw against Spurs the first game of the season, then they beat Fulham. But since then, they haven't won a game. So they really, really need a win. And I'm hoping Mbwemo can do that and get a goal and an assist and all the bonus points against Burnley at home. Rashford, I'm just oh, I'm just done with this team, to be honest. I can't wait to wildcard. But Rashford with Sheffield United away, um, shocking this season. But he did get a goal against um, Italy for England. So I'm hoping that can boost his confidence up. I'm hoping he can get a return against Sheffield United away. Um, if he's going to do it, it's going to be against Sheffield United away. Um, they're shocking defensively. And I think Man United really do need this win. And Rashford needs a goal in the league as well. Saka. Chelsea away, again, not too sure if he's injured. If he is going to miss this game, then I'll probably transfer him out. Um, I should have done it last week. I should have done Saka to Salah rather than Golden to Madison. Um, I guess it's one of them things where I thought the more balanced team and I did think Saka was going to start and I thought I'd rather have 11 players on the pitch than have 10 um, with Salah, but Saka didn't play. So um, it was a shocking decision and um, hopefully Saka can repay my faith and keeping him in my team and get a return against Chelsea if he does play. If not, then I'm screwed. Um, and yeah, wish me luck anyway. But um, we'll get on to the forwards and hopefully they can carry me this game week because I am expecting big things from my forward this game week. So like every week, I've got the two City boys. Disappointing last game week, but Brighton at home, I do think it is a good fixture for forwards. Brighton have been leaking goals um, this season, to be honest. that They haven't kept one clean sheet. Um, Liverpool scored a few against them. They've got banged by Newcastle, I think it was, and oh, sorry, Villa, they got beaten by. Um, so I am hopeful and I will be captain in Haaland this week. I think he is the best captain choice, even if I did have Salah. Um, that is a derby, Everton. And Everton have been doing pretty, I want to say well, but they've been doing better um, the last few games. So for me, that's why I have gone for Haaland captain. Alvarez, I think he's been Man City's best player this season. Um, I think he is crucial to everything good they do. He got a goal in the Champions League as well um, recently. Um, I am a bit worried about the international break for him, but I'm hopeful that City can um, perform in this game and, and absolutely fresh Brighton with Alvarez getting two, Haaland getting two and assists all round. So um, fingers crossed with that one. Uh, next, we'll go on to my potential transfers. Um, I have, like I said, I have got a wild card in my pocket. So if injuries turn bad and Haaland picks up an injury and Son and Madison and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, then maybe wildcard will be played, but we'll have to look at the transfers if everything goes to plan, even if it doesn't. So um, let's get into that now. So for potential transfer, this does mean that all my players are going to be fit. So Mbwemo would come out. I do have a bit of money in the bank. So um, that again does give me a chance to upgrade Mbwemo's position. So 1.9 million in the bank. Yes, he's got Burnley at home. But like I said, Brentford have been shocking this season. This would be kind of a one week punt before the wild card, I'd say. So I'm looking at players that have really great fixtures. Um, Liverpool have good fixtures. Man United have a good fixture. And Man City have a good fixture. Um, however... I am leaning towards um, Diaz in this one. So, like I said, um, he does have uh, Everton at home. Yes, I'm not too confident on that being a thrashing, but I do think Diaz can get an attacking return. And like I said, Everton were doing a bit better this season. But um, for one week, I don't really mind Diaz. Um, I am a bit worried about Jota coming back from his suspension. Um, that could make an impact. That could change things as Diaz has only got two goals this season. So, um, Diaz is definitely an option, but Again, with Everton looking a little bit better, I probably won't go for him. Foden is probably one of my favourites out of these three. Um, probably my favourite, I'd say. Um, triple up on that Man City attack, if he does play, that is. Um, yes, Brighton are a good team, but um, I can see City scoring loads of goals in the game. And then they've just lost their last two Premier League games, so I'm sure they're angry and want to want to perform. He's got four attacking returns this season, Foden, so he's done okay. Um, and it is a one-week punt, so... Um, I guess he only needs to do well for one week and hopefully he does start. 
Um, but there is, I'd say, a bit of um, unsurety, if that's a word, about Foden and Diaz starting. So Bruno Fernandes could be the option I go for. Uh, I've just literally slagged off Man United, but um, for one week, he's on penalties. He's got two goals, one assist this season, which is not good enough. Don't get me wrong, but he is on penalties. He's a Sheffield United away. Man United surely have to do something. They have to turn things around and there's no better place than Sheffield United away. That would be a massive, massive risk going Fernandez as I do have Rashford. So I'm kind of doubling down on Man United putting in a performance. If we do get team news at Diaz or Foden starts, I'd probably go for them, especially as Liverpool are the early kickoff. Or if Jota starts, I could go for Jota too. Um, but that was it. Let me know what you think. What transfers would you make to my team? Let me know below. Um, and would you wildcard? Mm, I'm not too sure. I think I'm better off saving it. But yeah, let me know below. Smash a like and please do subscribe to the channel on the road to 1K. Let's get this done before game week 10. Have a good game week. Cheers.